Hey, what is going on guys? AJ here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a guide on how to play on Holy DKs effectively for 5.3 and 5.4. This is going to be your PvP DPS guide where I'm going to teach you guys everything that you need to know. So, we're going to be going over how Unholy DKs work, gearing, rotation, talents and glyphs, macros and tips. If you guys want to go to any of these sections, you can just click their boxes right there. Or if you guys want to come back to this main menu, you guys can hit the Unholy Presence button at the top right corner of your screen. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to toss it a like and a subscribe. Thank you guys, and let's do it! Alright guys, so to get started here, we're going to be going over how an Unholy DK works. Unholy DKs are perhaps one of the most weirdest classes in the game. You are a melee, you are a ranged, you are a pet class, and you're like a combination of all three. It's a really weird class, but it's cool. Now, Unholy DKs work by a few different main abilities. Most of them mainly being Dark Transformation, Gargoyle, your Necrotics, a Dot Spread, an Unholy Frenzy, and Soul Reaper, my personal favorite. Now. Pretty much how an Unholy DK works is when you get five stacks of your little death coil buff there, you make your pet big, and you get damage out of your pet. When you pop your gargoyle, what happens is you want to pop your strength trinket first, and then you pop your gargoyle, and your gargoyle copies all over all of your stats and makes it big and do a lot more damage. Now, dot spread. This is where a lot of your big abilities in Unholy come from. This is where all your damage is. By spreading dots to all members of the raids, you're going to get a high amount of damage in Unholy. And this is where you guys need to do this mainly in RBGs. If you guys can get a dot spread to an entire team, you guys are going to be doing a whole ton of damage. Unholy Frenzy, to go over that. Unholy Frenzy pretty much gives you 20% increased haste for about 30 seconds. And you can put this on any team member. So, if your healer needs... Uh, some quick haste you can toss it to him or if you want to do this during your burst you're more than welcome to soul reaper this is my personal favorite what you do is you put this on about five seconds before a target's about to die and what happens is is if they're about below 35 percent you got a ton of necrotics on them and bada bing bada boom they're gonna die because it's gonna hit for like 100k it's a pretty awesome ability now uh necrotics necrotics is where most of your pressure comes from necrotics basically puts a shield on your target, which prevents all incoming healing until that shield is healed off or until the debuff expires. Now, by putting out necrotics and by putting out massive damage, what happens is you're, you put out pressure. This is how unholy DKs work. You put out pressure with your necrotics, you spread your dots, and you get all these other little things, your gargoyle, your dark transformation, your soul reaper into play. And that is how a DK puts out pressure. Death ruins are your bread and butter, your main goal with unholy to turn all of your frost and unholy ruins over into, excuse me, frost and blood ruins over into death ruins. By doing this, you're going to be able to do necrotic a ton. Death ruins count as blood, frost, and unholy ruins, but they're also used for one cool ability, which, as I just said, is necrotic strike. Now, by getting death ruins and unholy, and by using them effectively with your burst, you guys are going to down targets, and that's how an unholy works. Alright guys, let's move on. Alright, let's go over gemming and enchanting real quick. So, for gemming, you're pretty much going to want to gem the Bold Primordial Ruby all throughout. Bold Primordial Rubies are the 180 Strength Gem, and you're going to want to gem them in pretty much all your sockets. You want to break sockets to get them. You want to break all the PvP power socket bonuses to get them. So, break sockets and gem straight Bold Primordial Rubies. Your Meta is going to be the Reverberating Primal Diamond. This is a cool ability. It's going to give you additional uh, Critical Strike... And it, it's a really cool meta, and definitely it's going to be your best choice. Uh, the Tense Imperial Amethyst, this is pretty much uh, what you're going to put in the places like your gloves and your belt, which are going to give you strength socket bonuses. You don't want to break the strength socket bonuses, so put the Tense Imperial at Amethyst in there. Alright guys, so let's talk enchant. So for your enchants, you guys are going to want to enchant strength and mastery. Like I said, strength is going to be your top stat and it's going to help you do more damage. Mastery, of course, is going to help your dots do more damage. So, Strength and Mastery are going to be your best two enchant choices. For reforging, you guys want to get the heck out of Critical Strike. 
Critical Strike is not going to help you very much as a Death Knight, especially in Frost, but this is an Unholy Guide, of course, but for Critical Strike, you just don't want to have it. So anywhere that you can get out of Expertise, Critical Strike, or Hit, make sure that you keep a Hit Cap at 3% and an Expertise Cap at 3%, though. You want to reforge into Mastery and Haste. Mastery is gonna is what makes your dots tick. It's what makes your dots do more damage. The more mastery you have, the more shadow damage your dots do, which is big. Your haste is gonna help your runes to refresh more, so it's a good stat. So if you can't get mastery on an item, the second choice that you're gonna want to reforge it into is haste. And if you have mastery and haste on an item, then just don't touch it. All right, on the rotation. So the goal of unholy is to get death ruin. Death Ruins are your bread and butter of Unholy. Your goal is to convert all of your Ruins over at all times. You should never have uptime on your Ruins, ever, in the Death Ruins. What this does is by creating Death Ruins, you're going to be able to pump out Necrotics and put out pressure. That's how an Unholy DK puts out pressures. Soul Reaper is used at about 50%, and by using Soul Reaper and Necrotics in combination, you guys are going to land kills. Now, how do you get Death Ruins? Well, there's a little ability that Death Knights get as a passive, which is called Reaping. What Reaping does is when you use an ability, the ruins that you consume by using that ability are going to be turned into Death Ruins. These abilities are as follows. Festering Strike, which is a Blood and Frost Ruin. So the Blood Ruin will be transformed into a Death Ruin, and the Frost Ruin will be transformed into a Death Ruin. And then you wait through their cooldown, and then they're up. Festering Strike, uh, like we just went over. That's the first one. Icy Touch, next one. Frost Ruin, Blood Boil, Blood Ruin, Blood Strike, Blood Ruin, and Pestilence, Blood Ruin. Now, Blood Boil. We're going to be going over this and why the Rolling Blood Talent is good in a moment. But for Blood Boil, this is pretty much going to be your AoE dot. But say you're in an arena and you don't want to spread dots, you don't want to break CC. Here is the cool thing, Blood Strike. Blood Strike is going to be your single target converter to Death Ruins. That's the cool thing about it. So if you don't want to spread dots, if you don't want to break CC, there you go. Use Blood Strike. Finally, Pestilence. This is a cool alternative if you don't want to take uh, Rolling Blood for 5.4. Use Pestilence, and you can spread your dots that way. So it's a good alternative. All right, let's move on, guys. All right, guys, let's go over the first tier of talent. So for the first tier right now in 5.3 and probably in 5.4, the best talent to choose is going to be Rolling Blood. What does it do? Well, every time that you blood boil, all of your dots are going to be spread all around the raid. It's going to trigger a little ability that I like to call Pestilence. Now, Pestilence, what it does is it spreads your dots around, and it gives you that AoE pressure that Unholy Death Knights are known for. Now, Rolling Blood, whenever you use your blood boil, is going to trigger Pestilence. So it's a pretty cool thing. Now, that's why it is currently the best ability, and it will probably remain so, is because it makes it a lot easier to spread your dots. A lot easier. A lot easier. Now, however, 5.4, there is an alternative to Rolling Blood. We became so used to it throughout MOP that we have almost forgotten that Pestilence grants us a Death Ruin as well as uh, Blood Boil. So, why not use Plague Leech? Plague Leech in 5.4 is going to convert over two of your Ruins, a Blood and a Unholy Ruin, excuse me, a Blood and a Frost Ruin, over to a death ruin. So, what happens is you're able to get massive necrotic pressure off using Plague Leech. So Plague Leech is going to be an interesting talent in 5.4. I think it's going to be worthwhile taking, as long as you can continuously spread your dots. And I think it will definitely work. Alright, let's move on to tier 2. Alright, so for the tier 2 talents, we currently have Anti-Magic Zone and Lichborn. Lichborn is going to be your best choice all around. If you're when in doubt, use Lichborn. AMZ is situational, however. AMZ can be used against double caster teams, but it probably won't be as good in 5.4 because it looks like it's getting nerfed right now. The patch notes are not out yet, but check the description box right now and it'll tell you when they come out if they decide to change it, if it is good or not for 5.4. Now, Lichborn is the best all around, mainly because it heals you and it gets you out of fear. This is a free trinket, and it's a heal. So it's a good choice, and I would definitely recommend Lichborn for 5.3 and 5.4. Alright, Tier 3, guys. This is a quick one. This is just a fix the 8. It's the best. 30 second cooldown on it. You can't go wrong. It's a stun. It's all around. It's just the best. It's gonna outdo Death's Advance and Chill Blades every day. 
However, Chillblains is good for certain maps like Silver Shard Mines. You guys definitely want to take it on Silver Shard Mines, but that is the only map that you should take it on. It's a great talent. Asphyxiate is probably the number one for this team. Alright, next up we have Conversion and Death Pact. Now, Conversion is an interesting ability. You guys saw that in my Double Conversion macro video. Conversion allows you to continuously convert Runic Power over into health, restoring at about 3% of your health per second. You can get double, so it's good. Conversion is good for twos, and just about only twos. You don't really want to take it that much in threes, and you definitely do not want to take it in RBGs. It will not save you. However, Death Pact is good. Death Pact is good for threes, it's good for fives, it's good for RBGs. So all around, Death Pact is probably going to be your best choice, and Conversion is probably going to be the second best choice. As of 5.4, Death Siphon got a little buff, but it's still bad. Until they make Death Siphon convert all of your Death Ruins over into healing, it's not going to be good. So I wouldn't recommend taking Death Siphon. Ever! Alright, coming up next is Blood Tap. Blood Tap always is good. It gives you that massive necrotic pressure, and it gives you a controlled burst, which is what you want out of a holy. So Blood Tap, that's pretty much going to be your obvious choice. Always. Last but not least, we have Desecrated Ground. Desecrated Ground is one of the best abilities in the game. It removes you from all CC effects, except for Roots. It doesn't remove that. But obviously for Arena and Rated Battlegrounds, Desecrated Ground is going to be amazing. As of 5.4, they nerfed Gorfiend's Grasp into the ground because it DRs with Ursus Vortex, so there will no longer be any grip knockbacks or anything of that sort. Alright guys, let's talk Glyphs. So, Glyphs are probably one of the most important things for Unholy DKs. Because, obviously, these guys are going to give you a boost over your opponent's PvP. Now, but, that's only if you have right glyphs. What are they? Well, let's go down the list. First glyph we're going to be looking at is Dark Side the Enlightenment. What this pretty much does is it lowers the uh, cooldown on Dark Side and it makes it extend on your target a little bit longer. Now, it's a really good ability, and I would recommend it for threes. Uh, it would definitely be really good, probably maybe in RBGs, but the thing about... Dark Slamly Lacrim is that you need to know when to use it. So if you don't know when to use it, eh, I don't know if I would take it or not. But if you're good at using Dark Side at the right time, definitely use it. Because you can steal those polys, you can steal those cyclones, you can turn the game around. So. Next up is Glyph of Death Grip. Always for RBG. You always want to have this Glyph for an RBG. Why? This is going to extend the range on your Death Grip by 5 yards, people. That is amazing. Now, this is going to allow you to grip a tank or a DPS or whoever you're going to call on. It's going to allow you to grip them in even if they're really far back. This stuff is amazing for RBGs. It's definitely amazing. Next up, Glyph of AMS. This is pretty good for RBGs as well and for 3. If you guys can take this Glyph, definitely good. Uh, but not mandatory. Pretty much it just uh, extends the absorption limit on your AMS to 100%. And it makes it a fairly good choice for RBGs. I would recommend it. Next up, this is like a mandatory glyph. This is Glyph of Icy Touch. This makes your Icy Touch dispel one thing from your target. Now, <laughs> it's amazing. You use Icy Touch a lot to get those death runes, so definitely use it, because it's an amazing glyph. Next up, Glyph of Death and Decay. This one is one of my personal favorites. I love this glyph. It makes all the enemies in your uh, Death and Decay get slowed by 50%. That's really good. It's one of my personal favorite glyphs, and I really enjoy it, and I think it's good for RBGs and arenas, but it's definitely situational, so no one needs it. Next up, Glyph of Shifting Presence is Arena Only. Only use this in 3s or 2s or whatever. Do not use this in RBGs, it's not very good. You're just going to be setting Blood Presence in RBGs the majority of the time, so no one real needs this glyph. Uh, or any team that you feel like they're going to go on you immediately, don't use this glyph. It's situational though, and it's good to start in Unholy Presence and then switch over to Blood and Keep it's, it's convenient, but not mandatory. Next up, Glyph of Res Resolent Glyph for a minor glyph. Resolent Grip. What this is going to do is this pretty much makes it when your Death Grip is immune, it gets reset. Pretty good ability, I would think. And I would think that that would be a mandatory glyph for people. Next up, Glyph of Death's Embrace. Now this is a good one, this is uh, when you go to heal your pet with your death coil, it's going to refund your runic power. So, cool trick here by the way guys, if you use your sudden doom procs on your pet, you get free runic power out of that. That's a tip. Now, so it's a good glyph and I would say that it is pretty much mandatory for our holding. 
All right, let's move on, guys. All right, let's talk macros, guys. So this is going to be your first macro, your burst macro. What this is going to do is it's going to pop all your stuff at once. This is going to be like your kind of one-shot macro for an ult. What it is, it's slash cast whatever your burst trinket is, and then slash cast the Blood Fury if you're an orc, slash cast Unholy Frenzy, and slash cast Summon Gargle. Great, tr great macro. I recommend using it. Next up, this is your Blood Tap Necro Macro. This is going to allow you to get those necros out a lot faster without having to press Blood Tap first. This is the most convenient macro in the game. You have to use it. Hashtag show to a God, did I just say hashtag? <laughs> Pound show to a dip necrotic strike. And then it's going to be slash cast blood tap and slash cast necrotic strike after that. Up next, up next on the lineup for macro, we have some cool stuff. This is the Lichborn heal map. It's going to be pound show tooltip Lichborn, slash cast Lichborn, slash target, and whatever your name is, you're going to put it in there. For example, my name is Desecration, so it's going to be slash target Desecration, and then slash cast Death Boy. What this does is when you hit it, your Lichborn, it's going to trigger your Lichborn, and then you're going to be able to, by spamming that button, you're going to keep healing yourself with your Death Boy. Very good. Next up, Pet Stun Macro. It's going to cause your pet to stun an enemy without having to keep that on auto. You guys, once you have these macros in, you're going to want to keep your uh, pet stun and your pet leaf. Your leaf you're going to want to keep them off on your, back, on your pet button. Do not keep them. Pound show tooltip, pound show, slash pet attack, slash cast gnaw. For pet leap, it's pound show tooltip, pound show, and then slash pet attack, and then slash cast leap. This is going to be, both of these macros are great. Remember, use your pet leap during that dark transformation period because that's going to interrupt an enemy ability. And then your pet stun macro, that's beautiful. I love your pet stun. Use that effectively. Great boost to survival. All right, let's move on to tips. All right, guys, so here's some quick tips that is going to help improve your gameplay for PvP. Tip number one, spread those dots. You need to spread dots at all time. I cannot emphasize this enough. Spreading dots is the bread and butter of Unholy DKs next to Death Thrones. <laughs> Spreading dots is just so important. If you can get your dots on every member of the raid, you do massive damage. It's amazing. And if you guys get that Glyph of Enduring Infection, I know I didn't go over that in my Glyph section. It's not so good in 5.3, but in 5.4, I think it's going to be worth it to take it in RBGs. The Glyph of Enduring Infection. If you have that with your dot spread, you're going to have all of your dots on the enemy team, and they can't dispel them. <laughs> so, definitely, guys, spread those dots. Next up, reapply the dots with your burst. <laughs> if you are bursting and you apply your dots on your target, guess what? They do more damage. So, reapply your diseases when you burst. Next up, Double Death Grip to stop healers. Double Death Grip is one of the most amazing abilities in the game. What you can do is if a priest pops inner focus, you can double death grip and it's going to completely ruin their inner focus, like 100%. Your double death grip is one of your best abilities out there. So definitely use it to your advantage and you can use it to stop healers from casting. It's really good. Next up, use Horde of Winter for quick runic power. Your Horde of Winter generates runic power, guys. So use it when you need some quick runic power to get a quick death coil off or something like that. Use your Horde of Winter. Make it a part of your rotation. Next up, Soul Reaper. You gotta use it at about 50%, or right after you burst. This is gonna give you enough time to get your RB, to get your Soul Reaper on the target and have it go off at the exact right time. It's gonna come with time that you're gonna know when to exactly apply it, but at around 50%, it's a good time to do it. Last but not least, don't keep your pet stun and leap on, like I said before. Now, one more thing, guys. I want to go really back over the rotation to emphasize this again to you guys. Your rotation consists of Festering Strike, Icy Touch, and Blood Bowl. Those are your main three abilities. Now, use Festering Strike for quick damage, but don't use it all the time. Use your Icy Touch and use your Blood Bowl. In the end, you're probably going to get more Runic Power out of that, I think. Someone check that. <laughs> but pretty much you're gonna get it's better all around to use your icy touch and your blood boils because it's gonna give you that dispel which is really really good and a dot spread your festering strike is just a quick ruin if you need it and it extends your dot so use it but don't overly use it uh so yeah guys i think that's pretty much it thank you guys so much for watching this video 
I have a few other videos out right now, my Blood DK tanking guide, and I'm going to be releasing a Frost DK PvP tanking guide, or uh, PvP DPS guide pretty soon. Thank you guys all for watching this video, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you guys like to support me, then please subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate every subscription. Thank you guys for 200 subscribers, we are pretty much almost there when I'm putting out this video, so I'm going to thank you guys right now for that. That is... And another awesome accomplishment. <laughs> so thank you guys very much for watching this video. I appreciate it. Spam the like button. Spam the subscribe button. Leave a comment if it helped you out. I really like to read it. And I'll get back to you. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. And I'll definitely get back to you guys on that. Thank you guys all for watching. And I will see you guys all in my next video. Peace out.